Okay, section 8.1. Hopefully you have a handout for these notes. It'll save you some time, but if not, pause it. Uh, if you're in class, you would have one. So we're going to take a look at 8.1, which is adding and subtracting polynomials. Add and subtract polynomials. And what is a, mo what is a polynomial? Poly means many. So many nomials. And a nomial means term. So many terms. So what if you have a monomial? A monomial means you only have one term. Mono meaning one. A binomial, bi, like bicycle, means two terms. A trinomial will have three terms. Anything more than that, you just call it a polynomial. So take a look at this, write it down if you need to. You say that as 2x to the third power plus x squared minus 5x plus 12. We're still working on some definitions. That would be a polynomial with four terms. One, two, three, four terms. A term means a group of numbers or variables, or it can just be a variable by itself, or it can just be a number by itself. But a term is separated by any addition and subtraction. So 2x cubed, since that's all multiplication, is one term. x squared is a term. Negative 5x is a term. So those are your four terms. In the front of these four terms, this 2 right here is called the leading coefficient. We've talked about coefficients before. This is a 2 for a coefficient. This has a coefficient of 1. You can't see it, but it's there. This has a coefficient of negative 5, and this doesn't have a coefficient because there's no variable. But the leading coefficient is the one in the front, the one at the very beginning of it. Okay, then take a look at the order these are written in. 3, 2, 1, None. You always write a polynomial in the order of its exponents. The highest one goes first, three, two. Of course, I would never let you write this in here, but there would be one exponent there. And because there are not any x's here, that would have a zero. So three, two, one, none is the proper order for writing a polynomial. And when it's written in its proper order, you then know that its highest degree, highest degree, or highest exponent is called the degree. These, or, these numbers don't matter for order. It's only the exponent that matters when you write it in order. And then lastly, at the very end, this 12 is over here by itself. It's got a name somewhere I can click on here. That term is called a constant term. It never changes. If I said, what if x is 2? Well, if x is 2, then that's 8, and that times 2 is 16. If x is 2, that would be 4. If that was 2, that would be negative 10. doesn't matter. No matter what x is, this 12 does not change. So it's called constant, a constant term. And those are your definitions that you need to know as we talk about all of these in Chapter 8 and 9 and anything after. Its degree is the greatest exponent of the terms. If you haven't written that down, please write, write it down. And notice the exponents decrease from left to right. Three, two, one, none. Of course, you would never write that one or that one, but it's there. All right, example. It's going to ask you, these would be the directions, rewrite the polynomial so the exponents decrease from left to right. Identify the degree and the leading coefficient. So it's a three-part question. A, there's the problem. If you haven't written it down yet or if you don't have a handout, you're going to have to pause and write it down. Rewrite the polynomial so the exponents decrease from left to right. It's got to start with its biggest. So we know x to the third is going first, but look at that x to the third. It's negative. So you're going to start with negative x to the third, then move on to your positive 3x, 
And finish always with the constant term. The constant term goes last, and since that 15 is a positive number, you are going to have to add 15. That satisfies rewrite the polynomial so the exponents decrease from left to right. Identify the degree. So then you finish this by saying the degree, and remember the degree is the highest exponent. The degree is 3. Do not, don't write x to the third. It's just a degree of 3. And the leading coefficient, I'll let you abbreviate that as LC. Leading coefficient, don't get tricked by this. What number is in the front? Negative 1 is in the front. But you won't actually put a 1 there because you don't want to feel the wrath of Mrs. Bester if you put a 1 there. So the leading coefficient is negative 1. The degree is 3. Try it with B. 14x to the 4th plus 12x squared minus 10x to the 6th. Trying to trick you again, but you're going to start with negative 10x to the 6th. Then a positive 14x to the 4th. And finish with 12x squared. The degree in this case is 6, highest exponent. The leading coefficient is negative 10. Last one, not nearly as complicated, but sometimes when they're not as complicated, then kids get stuck with it. 3 minus 7x. Put your negative 7x first and your positive 3 last because that's constant. Didn't really do that on purpose, but all of our leading coefficients were negative this time. Not always. Degree? Ooh, what are you thinking on the degree on this one? There is an x. You can't see its exponent, but its degree is 1. Leading coefficient? Negative 7. Please do not put x as your degree. Just put the 1, the exponent that's there. So now that you know all the terms and the order of polynomials, now we're going to add them. And we've had practice kind of adding. It's almost like adding radicals. You can only add like terms. And like means they have to have the exact same exponent. You know already that you can't add an x and a y together. You know that you can't add a square root of 2 and a square root of 5. But did you know that you can't add an x and an x cubed together? Those are not like because they are not the same exponents. They look alike. You think of it when you go pick out apples at a store. That's an apple, and that's an apple, but that's a Macintosh, and that's a Granny Smith. They're both apples, they're both x's, but they are not the same. If you mix a Granny Smith and a Macintosh, you can obviously tell that they're different. So, here's another reason I gave you a handout, because this is a lot to write down. 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus x, in parentheses, plus 2x squared plus x cubed minus 1. There's a long way to do this, and there's a short way to do this. I don't even know if I'm going to show you the long way. We'll just go right to the short way. We're going to start knowing that we have to write our exponents in order from greatest to least. So we're going to start with this 2x, squared, 2x to the third, because the third power is the biggest one out of all of them. Notice I circled it. I'm going to also circle the term that is just like it with its sign in front. So if I have 2x cubed, and I'm going to add 1x cubed, all together, I will have 3x cubed. I'm going to switch colors. You can probably just have one pen or pencil, but you can still switch the shapes. After the 3, for the degree, the next highest exponent is 2. Take the sign with it. Negative 5x squared. I'm making a square rectangle. Add that to what goes with it, which is a positive 2x squared. What is negative 5 plus 2? It's negative 3 
And since I have negative 5x squareds and 2x squareds, I still have x squareds. Notice we didn't do 3 plus 3 is 6, or 2 plus 2 is 4. Only the coefficients get added. Leave the exponents alone. And I think I'll go triangle with this. A positive 1x and a negative 1. Oops, those are not the same. I tried to put a 1 in front of that. You go next with a positive 1x, and you look for a positive x that goes with it. There isn't any, or a negative x, any x. There is no x that goes with it. So we just write down plus x becomes next. And finish always with your constant. Constant is last. Final answer, 3x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 1. And since none of these have like terms anymore, you're done. You don't do any more work. Other than double checking to make sure you went in order. Three, two, one, none. All right, let's try it again. Pause it if you need to write this one down. Find the highest exponent. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Find the highest exponent. Two is the highest out of all of them. So I'm going to go 3x squared plus 1x squared which is 4x squared. I'm not switching colors this time, I'm just switch, switching shapes. Plus x, so we have a 1x and a 4x. 1 plus 4 is 5x. And we have a negative 6 and a positive 10. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4. See, so it looks complicated, it's not really that bad. And you're adding really small numbers. If you get stuck on a music calculator, don't screw up negative 6 plus 10 after all that work. Try this. Do it by yourself. Pause the video. When you come back, see if you got it right. Okay, when you come back, you should have 8x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x minus 8 adding only like terms, and it goes in order, 3, 2, 1, none. But then we have to subtract polynomials. When you subtract polynomials, you have to distribute the negative. Subtracting polynomials, you have to distribute the negative, and I'll show you what that means. Write this down. Okay, write this problem down. 4n squared plus 5 minus negative 2n squared plus 2n minus 4. Distribute the negative. Remember, a negative means the same as opposite. It wants the opposite of a negative 2, the opposite of a positive 2, and the opposite of a negative 4. And it only goes this direction. You don't distribute your negative backwards. So we're going to rewrite this whole problem the correct way without parentheses so we can clean it up a little bit. 4n squared plus 5 plus, it wants the opposite of a negative 2, so it becomes a positive 2n squared. The opposite of a positive 2n becomes negative 2n, and the opposite of a negative 4 becomes positive 4. From there, nothing's new. Let's just add like terms. And there's another way you can add like terms other than um, the different shapes. I prefer that you use the different shapes, but you could actually look at this and be like 4n squared plus 2n squared is 6n squared. Cross those off. Next up, we don't want the 5, that comes last. Negative 2n, cross that off. 5 plus 4 is 9, that goes last. So the only thing that's different about a subtraction is you've got to change all of those signs. Now, if you want to save a little bit of time, yes, I'll let you shortcut it, but you have to be super careful. I could have, actually, let's just scroll. I could have let you just change it by saying this one becomes positive, this one becomes positive, this one becomes 
a negative, and that one becomes a positive. As long as you make your negative super obvious. 23 years of teaching or a lot of years of teaching, guess what I see too many students do? They change that to a negative and they go like that. And they put a little leading teeny tiny negative on there. Or they put a negative like this. And they try to cross off their plus with a negative. And it's so hard to see. So you could, instead of rewriting it, plus, plus, minus, plus. Let's try that with this one. 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 subtract 3x squared minus x minus 8. Instead of rewriting it, we're going to go plus. This was a positive 3, so now it has to become a negative 3. Make it nice and big. This was negative, so it becomes positive. This was negative, so it becomes positive. Now go ahead and add like terms. We have 4x squared minus 3x squared, and 4 minus 3 is 1x squared. Don't put the 1. Negative 3x and positive x. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2x. And 5 plus 8 is 13. Final answer. Try this one by yourself. Pause the video. See if you got it. Really, practice it. See if you can do it. Okay, so this one might have ended up a little tricky. Hopefully you did plus, minus, minus, plus. If you add like terms together, you end up with negative 1x squared. But a positive 7x and a negative 7x is 0x's. And then the only thing you have left is your constant term, the 9. Do not leave this mess like this. Never put a 1 as a coefficient. So you'll finish it as negative x squared. You don't have to tell me that there aren't any x's left. Those are gone. So your final answer is negative x squared plus 9. All right, let's finish up. That's your subtraction. What if they gave you a word problem? They would give you a word problem, or in this case a geometry problem, because it's directly related to what it is you're learning in adding and subtracting polynomials. It says, write the polynomial that represents the perimeter of the figure. If you remember perimeter, it means the distance all the way around. So if you were going to find the distance or the perimeter of this triangle, and it was 3, 5, and 6, you would take 3 plus 5 is 8, and 6 is 14. What are you going to do with this type of triangle? You're going to take 9x minus 4, and you're going to add it to x plus 7, and you're going to add that to 3x plus 8, because that's how you find the perimeter of a triangle. Add up all three sides. Add together like terms. Now there just happens to be three of them. 9x plus 1x plus 3x is 13x. Negative 4 plus 7 plus 8 is a positive 11. That's the polynomial that represents the perimeter of the figure. And there's your notes. Good luck.